Grand Theft Auto 6 is just around the corner and I never finished Grand Theft Auto 5 back in 2013 so recently I decided to re-enter the CD lives of Franklin, Trevor and Michael and actually finish the game. Now while I was traversing the city of Los Santos in the state of San Andreas I was floored by how cohesive and alive that now graphically dated world is. I'd find myself stopping to inspect different 3D assets and to sniff the shitty roses so to speak. So in this video I'm going to cover the steps I took to recreate a 3D asset inspired by the world of GTA 5 but with GTA 6 in mind. You tell me exactly what you want and I will very carefully explain to you why it cannot be. What? The environmental cohesion in GTA 5 isn't just down to the graphical power but the art direction and environmental storytelling. And all across this little world are tiny little details that make it feel lived in. Now this attention to detail is really what suspends your disbelief and transports you to this other place. And there was one object I kept bumping into all across the world and it was this fan with streamers on it. And then I saw it in another games and even in the latest Ghostbusters movie as well and I thought I need one of those so I made one. Now this object creates movement in a static environment and tells a story. While it's seemingly innocuous it speaks about both the environmental and socio-economic climate of the location and I feel like this is a very important asset in the world of GTA for environmental storytelling. I also thought it'd be a fun one to recreate as you can see here and Two of the big leaps in real-time real graphics since GTA 5 are polygon count and texture detail due to faster graphics processes and more memory. So I set out to recreate a detailed asset for the next gen and let's crack into it. First things first, I made a mood and references board using a handy free software called PureRef. Not only for the design and proportions but wear and tear as well. It's important to collect enough references right at the beginning so you don't start guesstimating as you'll see and end up with wacky shapes that don't look right. The second step was to model the damn thing and since this is a hard surface manufactured object I chose to use Plasticity, a relatively new 3D software which I've been championing since its release for these kinds of projects. It's got many advantages over traditional polygon modeling as it is based on Parasolid, a CAD modeler but with artists in mind. You can get a free one month trial from the official web Plasticity website and if you like what you see you can use my code REFUGE10 for a free 10% discount at checkout. The first thing I did was create a square curve based on scale reference that I found online and extruded it out. I started at the base and began to push and pull elements to start building a shape, adding details as I went along. Plasticity is very forgiving as it's not polygons but nerves so you can do a lot of things like boolean operations without worrying about it. I then started to create a stem for the fan using another curve adding a taper to match my reference always keeping my references in mind. Here I used a variable fillet to create an interesting shape before scaling out the center to create a protrusion giving definition and importantly places for grime to collect. Overall I mostly used solid modeling for this object but I did need to resort to a little bit more advanced surfacing for a couple of nooks and crannies. I added these buttons and booleans have never been so easy. I added these little indentations on the button by booleaning a pill shape and then filleting new cavity edges. After finishing up with the base I decided to work on the fan cage. At this point I decided I didn't need reference and eyeballed it. I made some rings using circles and then the sweep command. I then used the line tool to create a basis for the cage bars and eventually when I was done I used the pipe command to create a tube. I then used circular array to create the rest of the bars but it ended up looking like dog shit because I wasn't looking at my reference. So I rage quit the cage bit and distracted myself with this fun little motor enclosure. I modeled some other important components including the fan blades making use of circular array again and for whatever reason completely ignoring my reference again. I then spent a sensible amount of time rebuilding the fan cage as it is the largest and most prominent part of the model it needed to be right. 
Using the same techniques as before, but paying more attention, I got to a shape I was happy with. One of the coolest things with plasticity though is the ability to do bevels that wouldn't really be viable in poly software easily. As you can see here I was able to make the intersections truly interact with each other which is great for highlights on moving objects such as this. I don't even need to bake these into textures, I can keep the geometry in the final product. I had to rethink my fan blades and came up with something a bit more realistic that I was happy with. That made more sense. This took a bit of trial and error but I got there in the end and overall the result was very good. And once again I was happy with the design and it was time to UV unwrap this asset. I won't go over the whole UV process here but let's just say I used a variety of techniques. I imported it into Blender using the Blender Bridge for plasticity and refaceted from tries to endgons. I regretted a bit not making those welds intersections and spent quite some time selecting faces despite it being quite tedious. I feel like it was worthwhile when those bits were unwrapped. I repeated this process quite a lot. Once I had swallowed the frog, the rest of the UV unwrap process was quite easy. After making the UVs, I then imported a high poly version and then I used my own plugin for Blender called Engon Pro to optimize both the high and low poly models. I initially made this plugin for optimizing hard surface Engon meshes, like the ones that are generated by Plasticity for example. It basically works by batching many actions into a few clicks and ensuring naming conventions on high and low poly match, saving time especially when working with many objects. Once I was done with Engon Pro, I exported everything as an FBX and went to Marmoset Toolbag 4 to bake my textures. This is my preferred texture baker and sometimes I even use its renderer over Blender for certain scenes. Here I use the Marmoset material system to pre a few materials before my texturing pass in Substance Painter, which I'm more comfortable with uh, for texturing, which is why I use that instead in the end. In substance, I started on the plastic, building up a procedural base for the material and then blending imperfections on top. I spent quite a lot of time tweaking this material, ensuring I wasn't going overboard or being too subtle. I wanted the asset to be well used and have character, but still be nostalgic and not inhospitable. A friendly but melancholy desk fan, if you will. I spent quite a bit of time on the fan blades, getting them dirty and transparent. A bit too much time for something that will essentially be moving too fast to see, but the devil's in the details, so they say. After getting the base down, I went to the physics brushes and substance. This bit's really fun and it's often my favourite part of texturing. It also tells you that the end of the tunnel's in sight. I highly re recommend making it this far on a project because it's just that great. After much more tweaking, the texture was starting to look the part and it was time to move on to animating the poor little thing. I set up a basic rig and by parenting the objects in the correct order, I made a basic keyframe animation with a cycles modifier for the fan blades. And then for the streamers, I extruded a plane around the cage bars on the fan trying to get proportions correct the first time. I then subdivided it to give it some geometry to deform along and I added a cloth modifier and a force field of type wind. I used vertex groups to pin the end of the streamer in place and the force fields for whatever reason sometimes need arbitrarily high values. I then made a texture map for the streamer. I think I ended up with a repeating texture of 512 by 512 repeated many times to make it very detailed and hold up at close inspection. The final result's a bit different to what you see here with a bit more dirt and grime. Back in Blender I added a subdivision surface modifier to the streamer and spent some time tweaking it. I duplicated and applied it across the cage. At this point it was all starting to come together. After baking the streamer animation I then made a swivel animation for the cage and motor. And that was it pretty much done. I'm really happy with the end result and I forgot about it for a couple of months and finally uploaded it online. Here you can see my Sketchfab uh, result. I truly hope the humble fan with streamers makes a return in GTA 6. I've uploaded it 
on Sketchfab for a price and on the Blender Kit paid plan if you want to download it and help out the channel. You can check my affiliate link for a paid Blender Kit subscription below. It's a great place to find all sorts of decorations for your scene. And I'll see you all in the next one. That's that. Tschüss.